Comparing aircraft dogfighting performance is complicated. There are so many factors to consider like speed, altitude, turn rate, energy retention, and with all of these changing variables also affecting each other. With so many parameters to keep track of, it gets very difficult to give an accurate description of what a plane does better and in what situation a plane has an advantage over another. What's more, Gaijin is very opaque when it comes to how their physics engine works, and there aren't that many solid resources when it comes to comparing aircraft performance. The stat cards are borderline useless, and the only way to get a good indication of anything is to go in-game and test the flight performance yourself. But what exactly do you test? Some things people have already tested are sustained turn rate and max speed, both of which there are spreadsheets for, but these two factors alone are not nearly enough to give it a good picture on the aircraft's performance. So is there a solution to this? Introducing the Energy Maneuverability Diagram, also called the Doghouse Plot, for its shape. There's a surprising amount of information conveyed by just this one graph, and in this video series I'm going to be going over how to read this plot, how to construct one, and how to use it to find out how your aircraft can find an advantage in a dogfight. So, what is an Energy Maneuverability Diagram? In its simplest form, all it does is tell us how well an aircraft turns at certain speeds. A position on this graph represents a certain state your aircraft may be in, your aircraft state being a combination of its airspeed and turn rate. Different positions on this graph correspond to different states, meaning that each position represents a different combination of speed and turn rate. For example, if my plane is flying at 500 kph in a straight line, it'll fall here on the x-axis at 500 kph TAS and 0 degrees turn rate since it's not turning. But then, if I start turning my plane at 20 degrees per second, I'll lose some speed and I might end up here, instead. The graph usually also comes with some helper lines that help gauge the state of an aircraft at different positions. These first set of helper lines show the turn radius. For example, because our aircraft state is on this line here, our turn radius is 400 meters. Notice that slower speed and higher turn rate tightens the turn radius. The second set of lines show us how many G's we're pulling. For example, because our aircraft state is on the curve here, we are pulling 5 G's. Notice that a higher speed and higher turn rate increases G's pulled. We can find exactly what our turn radius is and how many G's we're pulling using just our speed and our turn rate based off of these equations. These lines just save us from having to calculate it each time we want to find them. Now that we have this grid, we can describe the current state of our aircraft by plotting it on this graph. However, there are limits to what state our aircraft can be in, which depends on our aircraft's airframe, its thrust output, and our pilot. For example, a P-51D5 cannot exceed 855 kph or pull more than 11 Gs without its wings ripping off. Also, an aircraft loses turn performance as speed gets lower because a lower speed generates less lift, and so lowers turn rate. If our aircraft state is on this maximum lift line, it means that for the speed that we are at, we are generating as much lift as possible, and so achieving the tightest turn possible. If we were to try and pull our nose even more, our aircraft would stall and lose lift. With these bounds in mind, we now have a doghouse shaped plot and our aircraft state can be described by any point inside these bounds. The most notable point on this diagram is the top point here, where the maximum value for turn rate is achieved, called the maximum instantaneous turn rate. The speed at which this maximum turn is achieved is called the corner speed. Basically, if we want our plane to turn as quickly as possible for a brief moment, we should try and turn at this corner speed. Now, a horizontal turn at this speed is not sustainable because of how much drag we produce when turning this hard at, at this high of a speed. This means that at this point, our aircraft has a very negative specific excess power, where our drag is much higher than the thrust produced. In order for us to turn without losing any energy, we would have to do it at a lower speed, where our plane would produce less drag and turn less tight. In this state, we achieve our sustained turn rate, and because our plane is neither gaining or losing energy, the specific excess power would be zero. Another point at which specific excess power is zero is the maximum straight line speed where the aircraft is going at a speed where the engine produces just enough thrust to counteract drag, meaning the plane will neither gain nor lose energy and just continue at its current speed. Going any faster would produce more drag and result in a negative specific excess power, meaning that we would have to sacrifice energy in the form of altitude and dive to maintain a higher speed. 
Specific excess power is maximized at the point at which the plane produces the most energy through thrust and loses the least amount of energy through drag. This occurs here when turn is zero to minimize drag, and the optimal speed for the engine and propeller are achieved to maximize thrust. This is also the ideal climb speed for the plane since the maximal amount of energy produced can then be put into gaining the most altitude. Now we've been finding the specific excess power at certain positions on this plot, but it would be much more useful to know the specific excess power for every possible state on this graph. In order for us to represent that kind of data, we would have to add a dimension to the plot and make this plot three-dimensional and show specific excess power on the z-axis. 3D graphs are rather tricky to show in 2D format without an interactive plot. So a way to flatten this third dimension while retaining its information is to use contour lines to represent the specific excess power. Similar to how topological maps use contour lines to represent 3D elevation change on flat paper. Now we can see that if our aircraft state is here, turning at 20 degrees per second at 500 kph, our aircraft will have a specific excess power between negative 50 and negative 25 meters per second, meaning our aircraft would be losing energy at that rate and we would only be able to sustain the turn if we were diving that much. If our aircraft speed is here, turning at 15 degrees per second at 400 kph, our aircraft has exactly a specific excess power of zero and so would neither be gaining nor losing any energy. Anything in this region here has a positive specific excess power, and so an aircraft in a state here would be gaining energy while performing its maneuvers. There aren't any visible contour lines here because the max specific excess power achieved is 20 meters per second, below where the next 25 meters per second contour would be. And so that's how you read all the details on an energy maneuverability diagram. Each diagram shows how a specific airframe flies at a specific altitude with a specific fuel payload combination. So any change in airframe, like using a different plane, changing wing sweep, or using flaps, or any significant changes to the altitude or weight of the aircraft will change the graph. Something to note is that in most air realistic dogfights in War Thunder, you will be doing most of your dogfighting using your keyboard, meaning the elevator will either be fully deflected or not at all. So unless you're micromanaging your turns using the mouse, your plane usually will not be in the middle area here, since you will either be pulling maximum turn or not turning at all. Additionally, the instructor in Air Realistic limits the angle of attack you can pull depending on your airspeed, further limiting the states your aircraft can be in. This is why if you are good with sim controls, you can actually pull harder and sustain tighter turns. So, as a brief recap, an energy maneuverability diagram shows you how much your aircraft can turn at certain speeds, and how much energy you will lose or gain by performing those turns. It shows you the maximum instantaneous turn rate at the corner speed, maximum sustained turn rate, maximum climb, and maximum straight line speed. Now that we know how to read these EM diagrams, in the next video, I'll show you how we can generate these diagrams for a given aircraft, then use them to find a comparative region of advantage between the two different aircraft. That's all for now, stay tuned for more soon.